Hello, my name is Ryan Beckman and I'm a lead interpreter at Connor Prairie as well as a domestic art specialist. And today I'm going to teach you all how to make soft cheese. Now soft cheese is essentially like a ricotta, um, very similar to that, but it's just made with whole milk. So all you need is a gallon of milk and um, we're gonna use uh, some acid. So in this case, it's going to be uh, some lemon juice, but you could also use vinegar uh, and a little bit of salt and that's it. It's very easy. So uh, right now, I have the milk uh, on my stove right over here and uh, the milk is just heating up to um, what in the 19th century we would call scalding. Um, uh, which means you can put your hand in it, but you don't want to. That's about between 180 and 200 degrees. Um, when we make cheese in uh, the 19th century, uh, very often what we're using is rennet. Rennet is something a little different. It's the uh, enzyme from a uh, calf's stomach. And uh, what that will do is it will take all the, the uh, parts of milk that uh, make milk white, which is um, called uh, curd or casein protein in the modern day, and uh, kind of puts it all together and everything else that uh, separates out of that is called whey. We're going to do something similar but with uh, some acid in this case. So uh, these types of cheeses are not going to make the hard cheeses that you can get with rennet. So with rennet, um, what you do is you add the rennet, you let the milk sit, you can cut the curd after a few uh, few minutes, and then you press it and let it age on a shelf for several months, even years. But in this case, we're gonna do something that's gonna last us um, maybe less than a year, but um, we'll be able to uh, enjoy it right away. So, um, what I have right now is some milk uh, heating up over my stove at the moment and uh, the stove uh, has been heating for about maybe 15 minutes or so on medium to medium high. Uh, my little knob says six. So, um, And uh, at this point I'm going to test the temperature. So what I want to do is just take a, uh, in this case I have a meat thermometer. Candy thermometers are good too. So. Um, put that in there and I'm just seeing how far it goes and it's actually just a bit above 200 degrees a little bit above is fine you just don't want it to be boiling so you can see it's coming down now it's probably gonna be backwards in this video but um, in this case uh, what I'll do is I will take the milk right off the stove turn it off and um, let it sit for a few minutes until it gets to about 200. And so what we're going to do is come back in a few minutes and then I'll tell you the next step. So the next step is to add the acid and to do that um, all you need is uh, lemons. So I use fresh lemons. Um, I used about lemons that are about this big, two of them made two-thirds of a cup for one gallon of milk. So that's what you need. If you're doing a half gallon of milk, one-third of a cup will do. If you don't want to use lemons, what you can do is use vinegar. And very often in the 19th century, that's what people had on hand. Lemons are a bit expensive at the store. They're coming from long distance, places like Italy and uh, Spain and uh, even parts of the South by the early 19th century. But um, they're still quite an expense so uh, for the most part people were using things like cider vinegar because they were making their own cider at home uh, or if they wanted to be a little bit more fancy maybe wine vinegar or something like that so you can use that at home as well it's the same amount of vinegar to uh, lemon juice so if you wanted to use two-thirds of a cup of lemon juice like we are with our one gallon of milk it would be um, uh, two-thirds of, uh, of vinegar as well so uh, the next thing that we're going to do is add salt. So I just have a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to add it right in. And I'm going to grab a uh, spoon. Just give it a stir. 
One of the things that you want to do when the milk is heating up is heat it up very slowly. If you put it really up uh, on high, it can actually start to scorch on the bottom. So you just want to be sure to sort of gradually heat it up uh, and give it a good stir um, uh, every now and then so that it doesn't start to cook on the bottom. All right, and then the next thing is my pot the lemon juice that I freshly squeezed you don't have to do freshly squeezed you can actually just use uh, you know the, the the stuff from the bottle at the store so um, I was just being fancy today but um, so I've uh, two-thirds of a cup and I'm just gonna start pouring it in and just give it a good stir so give it a good stir for maybe about half a minute or so, and you will probably start to see some curd starting to form. This is a great thing to do with kids. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that, um, it's almost a scientific experiment, so they can see the, the curd starting to curdle, to clump together. Uh, and uh, what you wanna do is just stir it for a little bit. Let's see if I can grab some. There's already some starting to, to form. You can see that. So um, what you want to do is sort of let that sit for another five to seven minutes or so, um, so it can really fully form. And this is going to be uh, you know, a spreadable cheese, a cheese that you can put on bread, you can put on bagels. Uh, my friend Sarah was making bagels the other day with her sourdough, so you know, look up her receipts um, uh, to see that. Um, or you could even put it in um, pasta, so you can make uh, ravioli or um, even uh, lasagna with it. Um, so it's really versatile. And uh, it's one of those things that um, can not only just be used right away, but you can put it in a storage container and freeze it. So that's really interesting as well. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this wait for about five minutes, and then um, I will come back and pour it into our container. So what you wanna have on hand is um, you know, a pasta container. Uh, I have some cheesecloth that I bought at Kroger, but if you don't have that, you can certainly use um, any kind of uh, uh, smooth cloth. You don't want to use terry cloth because the, that cheese will stick to it for days. But um, some sort of smooth cloth, something that will strain it. And um, I'll show you in a, a couple of minutes how to hang it if you'd like, or you could just let it drain. Um, I also have a bowl in here to catch the whey. So it's mostly stopped dripping. You can wait for it to completely stop dripping. Um, usually that might be a half an hour to an hour. Um, or if you wanted a little bit more um, supple, easily uh, spread, you can um, kind of take it out right now where it's just slowly dripping and you'll have a, a very nice uh, cheese to behold. So uh, I'm just gonna take it um, out of its cloth gonna rip this just like that and I don't know if you can see but this wonderful stuff is kind of dripping out all those lovely curds And for the video's sake, I'm gonna leave this here, but I will um, probably drain that further and uh, scrape everything off of, off of the cloth. But uh, you can kind of see. Maybe you can't, let's see. <laughs> there we go. So, one of my favorite things to do with soft cheese, is to just grab a spoonful and 
and put it on a little bit of bread. You see that? But the best part is add a little bit of honey. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of local honey. Uh, this honey is from uh, Kempton, Indiana. And mm. 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 even a little bit of cracked black pepper would be good on that. The other thing I like to do on it is to add some chives or some dill um, and, uh, and eat it like that as well. Just spread it on bread. It's the best way to do that. So, um, but the longer you drip it, uh, the, the drier it will get. So it's something that, um, uh, you know, you can get um, a firmer cheese from just letting it drip for an hour, even two hours. So um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you can do it at home. It's very easy, uh, very fun. Kids enjoy it. Um, it's a really neat science experiment. So um, I hope you can uh, uh, do that at home. And if you do, let us know in the comments uh, below. So thank you very much. And we'll hopefully see you soon.